Newswire from Politico. Democrats freak out over Biden's perform debate performance. Biden is toast. Yeah, it's so bad. It is so unimaginably bad. And it's like, we've been there for years at this point. So it's kind of shocking that they are finally coming to that recognition. Uh, th this is what it took. I, I don't know. I don't know what the they were thinking. That was the worst aura from a president I've ever seen in my life. Bro, he's dead. There's no more aura. He's one HP. Yeah. Someone needs to throw him a health potion, but he's not going to survive. You know what I mean? He's done. It's so bad. Someone in his focus group, in Franklin's focus group said, I don't even know if Biden can make it to November. <laughs> I mean, yeah, me. I'm, I think that. Uh, even if, like, he drops out here, it's still so embarrassing because he could have dropped out, like, at any point before this. It didn't have to get to this point. Yep. No, it is It is every single day that is wasted is, is getting closer and closer to absolute bedlam. I mean, we're already there. Like, what are they going to do? I guess they can do, like, the convention. Like, they can change it up. Yeah. Old school style, you know? Rock out with your cock out like it's the 60s again. I know, that'd be kind of sick. This makes me so sad. I hate to see a king. I hate to see a king thrive and, and have his moment in the spotlight and then just like be so sad. Democratic Party loyalists mostly get their talking points from MSNBC and CNN and New York Times op-ed pieces. So if they are all in unison saying what like we've been saying for fucking months, like what are the guys going to do? What are, they can't think on their own. They can't yeah. come up with like, they can't spin it on their own. They're fucking cooked. Now Republicans are starting to get paranoid. Latest text. Honestly, this might've been bad for Trump. Biden may have been so bad. They may replace him with someone that could actually beat Trump. I don't know about that. I don't. Yeah. I don't think you really say that. Well, I mean, they are kind of convinced that like they're going to drop him out at any moment. That's kind of real. Like Republicans like consistently like just have like like at high levels have not been willing to believe that like they could actually run Biden. Dude, which I think actually, are you ready for this tin foil hat, tin foil hat conspiracy? Gavin Newsom has been suspiciously close to the Biden White House for quite some time. He's always rearing his ugly head. It was a beautiful head. Let's be real. Yeah. Gavin Newsom has been secretly dipping Visine into Joe Brandon's water. Joe Brandon actually is getting poisoned by Gavin Newsom like he's a 1950s housewife with an abusive husband with the hopes that he inevitably inevitably perishes <laughs> so that he can he can become the, the candidate. You were out there getting a chorus of questions about whether Biden should step down. There is panic that has set in. Uh, uh, well, there is panic that has set in among people who have watched this debate, who are Democrats, people who are strategists, and some even inside Democratic campaigns. Yeah. Do you think it's unfounded? Well, I think it's unhelpful, uh, and I think it's unnecessary. <laughs> he can uh, even get himself to say unfounded. Heads high. And as I say, we've got to have the back of this president. You don't turn your back because of one performance. Well, what kind of party does that? Not to belabor the point, but I mean, this was a Biden campaign strategy. This was their idea to yeah. do this, this debate now. Yeah. And I wonder what you think they got out of it. What was Biden's strongest moment <laughs> oh, from this yeah. debate in your mind? Well, again, back to the substance. He got, they got stronger, a lot out of it. He had more stamina Dude, over the, the debate. But was there Michigan one moment that you think sticks? Well, you know, it's difficult to assess. I need a little bit more <laughs> objectivity and time away from this in the context of trying to pick bro, those moments. Bro, he can't spin it. Even he can't spin is, it, bro. Come on. If Biden and Trump are rem remembered for any particular line, to me, it seemed like it would be the line, I didn't have sex with a porn star which uh, is not something we've heard on a debate stage before. Uh, when you use the words, I didn't have uh, sex with a porn star, you're not winning, you're losing at that case. Yeah, yes, yeah, totally, I dude, know, keep I coping. I know our friends in New York For sure. Dude, it's so bad that, like, even Rachel Maddow is not talking about it that much. Even, even like, MSNBC's like, yeah, it's fucking over. It's over. Um, so if you won't step aside, what are the conversations about what to do about tonight? Those will have to happen. So my question for the people who know best is who can have that conversation yeah, who, with who, the president? Who, who's the is only it, person in the know, party? I mean, Bill Clinton or Barack yeah. Obama might call him, but I don't know if that would matter. There's is one. it Jill Biden, Ted Kaufman? Who is it? Yes, uh, yes. Jill, Jill Biden is the single most important person in terms of sharing criticism in terms of being direct and i imagine that there will be uh there will be serious conversations within the president's inner circle people like mike donnellan people like steve reschetti people like anita dunn who will have very direct conversations with the president he's not somebody who shies away he is absolutely that's i think that's what untrue said that's literally untrue he's openly sheltered himself from any fucking criticism from having tough conversations and having 
direct feedback. No. So yes, absolutely. No, that's how I we got here because he's not having tough conversations. No, with that's cool. About the, before the elites sitting at this table determine that the rest of the country hated the performance, I think we got to see what voters have oh. to say. All right. Uh, yeah, dude. Gonna... Yeah, definitely. Oh, wait, they have the poll? When the paid professional dick riders are literally being like, we have to, we have to execute him. We have to kill him. We have to push him down a, a flight of stairs. And then like, yeah. and then also maybe even execute Kamala Harris. I don't know. We have to fix this entirely from the from the top to bottom. Like when they're saying shit like that, no, dude. What do you think the average guy is thinking? Yeah, we already know. Polls have consistently shown time and time again the overwhelming majority of likely Democratic Party voters are straight up saying that they think Joe Biden is too old. The polls yeah, show everybody, that eighty six percent of the of the public. 86% of people, and they act like that's just like, oh, that's just like one consideration you have to balance out. Uh, uh, no, this is a, in, into heading into oh, okay. um, the night from Kernaki. Poll, not yeah, capable exactly. of handling the presidency because of age. Joe Biden, 45%. Donald Trump, 16%. And it's like, oh, they're almost the same age. It's 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 just it's like they did like in 2016. It's childish. I don't know how they even believe it. It's not what the actual reality is. It's like perception. That's all that's ever mattered in politics. But it's like it doesn't help the party to have like this unviable person. <laughs> oh, they got this shit out quickly. Bro, like, Nicholas wow, Kristof get... wrote an article before Brandon was done going home. President Damn, Biden, I've seen prepared. enough. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so done. Cause... God, the knives are out, huh? Oh, my God, dude. They're just I didn't ages. have anything. I mean, holy fuck. This is so bad. They have to. They have to. You know, they have to do something. <laughs> I, I want to see what I the can't. polling is like. Oh, here's Kamala Harris. Oh, here, let's, hear, let's hear what this charisma suck has to say. He's been hearing from Democratic lawmakers and others around the country. You know she's um, excited. Some within your own party are, are wondering if President Biden should even step aside. What do you say to that? Listen, first of all, what we saw tonight is the president making a very clear contrast with Donald Trump on all of the issues that matter to the yeah, on mental deterioration. There was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. And what became very clear through the course of the night is that Joe Biden is fighting on behalf of the American people on substance, on policy, on performance. Joe but Biden is extraordinarily strong. And but I'm that, sorry, that on substance and policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly was disappointing for his oh! supporters. CNN is reporting Democratic lawmakers watching the debate were worried, uh, worried about the president's performance. One said it was a, a disaster. Another called it a train wreck. Those are Democrats especially worried that Biden did not punch back. How on hard Trump is she lives. holding back? Uh, listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has to be about substance. And the contrast is clear. Look at what happened it's during not. the course of the debate. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again. As this is the is narrative. Want, also, even on substance, like the Democratic Party sucks. What do you mean? Immigration is a massive fucking problem. America. In the way, like, a political problem, right? And, like, their solution is awful. Anderson, the point has to be performance in terms of what a president does. A right, president but, but, but who is fighting is insurrection against the Capitol. No, but I, I got the point that you're making about a one and a half hour debate tonight. I'm talking about it was too long. three and a half years of performance in work that has been ex historic. But this was a debate that your campaign wanted. You pushed through <laughs> this debate at this moment. Uh, I mean, you can't honestly say, I mean, can you say that you are not concerned at all having watched the president's performance tonight? <laughs> oh, this is so bad. It was a slow start. That's obvious to everyone. I'm not oh! going to debate that point. I'm talking it about the choice in November to have Bro, of their are you ready? They invoke the 25th Amendment on Joe Biden, which is something that they wanted to do to Trump. The Democratic Party tries to do this. I don't know what the process looks like, but I it would be very funny if uh, the, the Republicans somehow stopped it from happening because they think he's the perfect... <laughs> Uh, yeah, they could, I think. Yeah, because like, you need the cabinet members to vote in favor of it. And then I think the Congress has to like vote in favor of it, too. So they could keep him in power, I think. 
this is awesome. Also, it's wild to see CNN be so contentious to a bunch of fucking uh, to a bunch of liberals. Like it's just you yeah. know they're just hitting him on like a lot of stuff that they would normally be super nice about. <laughs> what is this? Uh, I asked Governor Gavin Newsom, "Are you going to be the next Democratic nominee?" That's November? his answer while he's uh, glowing. He's are you going to be the next Democratic nominee? No, we are. We our nominee is Joe Biden. I'm looking forward to voting for him in November. Uh, he's going to be our nominee. Because you know that everyone are talking about you as a possible nominee now. Oh my God, bro! He can't even hide it. Look He's at his smiling. fucking smile, ear to ear, bro. That's okay. That's fucked up. That's fucked up, dude. He this is Game of Thrones shit. Oh, Kamala is so not ready for this moment. By the way, I thought maybe she it. would be. I feel like Kamala Harris is such a fucking loser. Like even she knows she's not getting this slot. Yeah, she's gonna lose the contested convention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it's it's the fucking it's Gavin Newsom well, time. He he is floating right now. He is so happy. Oh my God, he's like all the visine I've secretly put into Joe Biden's water, <laughs> really <laughs> pushing him over the edge. <laughs> Kamala could have said he had a cold. She doesn't even know the leaks. I know he is fucking scheming, dude. Gavin Newsom, you scumbag. I fucking. Gavin Newsom has so many negatives, I think. Like, that's why, unlike Gretchen Whitmer, I think, like, Gavin Newsom... Oh, no. Under a normal situation, Gavin Newsom would be a fucking dog shit candidate, in my opinion. Yeah. Specifically because... Know. I mean, the thing is with him is that he never tries. And then when they did, they did the recall against him and he did try, he actually had a good result with that. But then in 2022, he didn't try and he, he did shit. So I don't know. Maybe if he locks in, maybe we haven't seen his full power. But I no, I mean, like he's dog shit in the sense that like he has so many weaknesses, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like one, obviously being like the governor of California. I, I, a lot of the country looks at California as like this bedlam, like lawless land where you know, immigrant uh, uh, homeless people are walking around like zombies and speaking languages you've never heard before and fucking killing people, right? Like, they think, yeah. like, people are doing the knockout game outside of my fucking door right now yeah. uh, to the old the white ladies. So there's that. California also has, like, real problems in terms of the homelessness uh, the issue. Housing. The housing market is absolutely fucked. So I feel like you have, like, all of the social issues that many of the... Even swing states would be like, oh, we don't really like that that much. But then beyond that, you could just like talk about how bad the housing market is. And, you know, the, the campaign against them would be don't make my country look like California because everyone's yeah. understanding of California is, is Skid Row. Like everywhere in California is Skid Row. Yeah, it's, you don't run like the governor of Arkansas for like the Republican nominee. Like you yeah. don't do that. Axios has comments from the Dem U.S. House reps, by the way. What they're saying, one House Democrat described the president's debate performance as awful, exclaiming, what the fuck? I am in a state of shock, said another. Why are you shocked? I fucking hate I these pieces of shit. How are you shocked? That's how he is. It's like they just hear them say, oh, Biden's actually really sharp behind closed doors. And they legitimately believed it. I just don't understand it. Like, are you never around him? Like, what's happening? You never see him? You don't see any videos? When Karine Jean-Pierre says it's actually AI, you think that it's actually AI? Is that what you think is going on? Yeah, well, he doesn't meet anybody, so I guess they assumed he had to be. It's like it's like too big to fail. It's like, well, he wouldn't be running if he was really that bad. It's like he wouldn't be that irresponsible. <laughs> they just they have no understanding that like Joe Biden can be just as narcissistic and like childlike as Donald Trump. They don't think about that. Mm -hmm. Like they don't they don't. They, it's like not in their realm of comprehension that like this guy could be just holding on for dear life at this thing because out of pure resentment pure spite one female house democrat said it's time for a woman to save both these men from their misery president whitmer has a strong ring to it referring to michigan That's governor cool. gretchen whitmer whitmentum they're saying it they're saying big gretch all around the halls of congress you objectively can't say trump won though he proved he's an outright dipshit what everybody knows he's a dipshit he was the fucking yeah, president what are you talking about He's been running for president or president for a decade. Like, like this has already been established. I'm the one guy who's like, who's this Trump guy? Let me, let me, let me tune into CNN. <laughs> oh, wow. He seems like kind of an asshole. These guys are, are maxed out on name recognition. One guy has been in politics for 100 years. The other guy was a TV personality and like, you know, the most polarizing president. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's not 2016 chatter. Everybody, yeah. everybody knows, and everybody's made up their fucking minds. Right now, it's a race to the bottom on, like, people that aren't currently motivated to go out to vote, but, you know, maybe they will uh, go, all right, you know what, this is pushing me over the edge. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. 
Oh, wow. no, bro. Are you serious, bro? They're, they're talking, talking to, to him. him like he's a dog. I don't give Kaya treats th when she does this, okay? Like, this is this is like basic, you know, you, you, you're house trained. Like, you didn't pee inside the house. Congratulations. Like, what the fuck are we doing? I think I talk to my dog when she's hit. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? Bro, Jill is running the show, by the way. Straight up. <laughs> I'm a truther. I'm a I'm a Jill Biden truther. She is yeah. she is keeping this motherfucker in the race. He has no look at his eyes. They're dead. He has no idea what's going on. He does not know what's happening. He's like, yeah, did I do good? Did I do good? Did I say the lines? Thank you. Remember when their big thing was uh like Joe Biden fucks Jill super hard to like to, to neuter the uh the the fucking <laughs> the propaganda that like uh you know to the attacks that Joe Biden was like old he was like no you don't understand he blows her back walls out <laughs> he's he's having so much sex with Jill Biden <laughs> yeah he just the Nick, the Lincoln bedroom looks like a war zone <laughs> till the walls are sweating <laughs> oh no Wait, yeah, political you know article just dropped. Democrats consider the unthinkable. It's time for Biden to go. Key donors the are already blowing. The unthinkable. Yeah. Well, unthinkable if you're like only watching MSNBC and I guess like they keep telling people that Joe Biden is fucking really hard. <laughs> <laughs> the sense of panic and shock that they're demonstrating is so funny to me. It's like, have you not seen anything? Like, were they actually hallucinating this whole time? Yeah, I think it, it's kind of fake. I think it has to be. I mean, either that or they all need to be voted out of office. But I mean, I, I do think it was just sort of a big lie thing where they thought, well, there's, there's no way he could be lying about this because it's so important. They underestimated how much of a malignant narcissist he is. Damn, Jank is Jank is calling it out. On behalf of everyone who tried to warn you but got nothing but grief for it, like Ezra Klein, Nate Silver, David Axelrod, James Carville, and myself. Ew, come on. Yeah. And Charlemagne the God and John Stewart. Mm -hmm. We were we were uh we told you we were trying to help. We wanted to beat Trump the most and we knew we had to have the strongest candidate to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Go off. Jank, this is his moment. Jank Mentum, baby. He was he yeah. was right. He literally tried to run for president specifically for this reason. Like he was very yeah. open about it too. He's like, yeah, listen, I know I'm not gonna fucking win, but if I get twenty percent, maybe, you know, someone like Gavin Newsom will come in and see like Biden is weak. Which of course didn't yeah. work, but <laughs> Dean did that too. That's why he's my hero. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there really no better Dem option? No, anyone is better than Biden at this point. Just like anyone was better than Hillary Clinton at that point. So it's really cool yeah. that we're relitigating 2016, even though we're post 2016, and we should have addressed some of those problems. And instead, very quickly, the media infrastructure uh, packed it up and and created this like neat little excuse spiral for Hillary Clinton that it was actually the left or it was Russian interference or it was this or it was that that actually caused the election. So that's precisely the reason why people are coming into this chat even right now and hitting those same fucking angles being like, well, it seems like you're really privileged and you're actually not interested in, you know, a second Trump term. And it's like, it's out of my fucking hands. This, this, oh my God, our only hope from Politico, the Politico article I pulled up, our only hope is that he bows out. We have a brokered convention or dies, the donor advisor said. Otherwise, we are fucking dead. God, what was his, what was the game plan here? Like, if, like if he's actually like totally like inept, like, and he's like this, and they know this, like, what do they think was gonna happen? And how did the State of the Union happen like it did? Like, what the fuck was going on with that? Okay, you want to know what was going on with that? The State of the Union, he was like coherent, right, throughout the entire yeah. process, except for a couple moments. If you yeah. remember, he panicked. Why did he panic? Marjorie Taylor Greene contested him. So he's like fine off of a prompter and can like hold his hold yeah, himself yeah. up. But the moment that there's another human being that is like demanding his attention or whatever, he flubbed. Because if you recall, when Marjorie Taylor Greene put up the fucking like the button or whatever and said like, oh, you know, you hate you hate white women that are getting murdered by illegals or whatever the fuck she said, he turned around and literally used the term illegals. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. And that's yeah. what I brought up before the debate. I was like, he's fine off of a prompter. He can maybe try and, uh, and, and add a couple one-liners in there. But ultimately, when he has like any sort of contest, it's over. He cannot conduct yeah. himself normally.